We're not sure about you guys, but we feel like we've not had a ton of information on Metro Exodus since it was first shown at last year's E3. Up until now, that is. We've now had the chance to play around three hours of the game's vulgar level shown in Microsoft's E3 2018 conference, and we came away extremely impressed by Exodus, which expertly blends story-led and open-world shooting. The game's coming out on February 22nd, 2019, the same day as Bioware's Anthem, and Days Gone, and probably Trials Rising, and no doubt Red Dead Redemption 2 if they delay it again, but we reckon Metro Exodus already makes a pretty good case for claiming your hard-earned cash on that day. Here are five surprising things in Metro Exodus we didn't expect to see from a Metro game. Going down. <laughs> that was great. This might be a bit of a generalisation, but we associate Metro games with skulking around in gloomy old Metro tunnels. The clue's sort of in the title. As a result, our overriding memory of the previous games was inky darkness, and while Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light were beautiful in their own way, they weren't particularly varied. Yes, there were trips to the surface, but they felt like rare treats. When these guys say they don't get out much, they really don't get out much. That electric tower there looks like a perfect sniping position. Let's go. So we were pleasantly surprised to get more than just a glimpse of the big glowing hydrogen reactor in the sky in Metro Exodus. The game has Artyom and his buddies travelling across post-apocalyptic Russia towards Vladivostok in a train called the Aurora, and it's almost entirely set outdoors. What's more, it looks extremely pretty. This mission is set in springtime as you cross the Volga River, some 776 kilometers from Moscow, and it's got a crisp, chilly atmosphere that you can practically feel. Look, a rabbit! The exodus of the title is an epic, year-long journey, and the seasons will change as you crawl across the continent on your train. Still, probably quicker than the 932 service into London Bridge. All this talk of the sun isn't to say you'll spend all of your time in daylight. There's a full day-night cycle, and you'll be able to choose to rest at various safe houses to progress the in-game clock. Yet another video game character who can sleep instantly and for as long as they like. What's your secret, man? I'm there at 3am wondering about whether I paid the electricity bill on time or not. Mm. One of the other big changes in Metro Exodus is that it won't be an exclusively linear experience like the previous games. Instead, the game is peppered with several large open world levels at significant points in the storyline, each of which will take several hours to complete. Imagine a little slice of Far Cry, only more Russian, obviously. These aren't designed as true sandboxes that will distract you indefinitely, though. The story still progresses during these levels with a fair degree of urgency. It just takes place in an environment that offers a bit more choice about how you approach a firefight. You also won't be mopping up endless fetch quests or ticking off map markers. In fact, your map looks like this. Get your act together, people. Not even an iPad 1. Man, times are hard in the apocalypse. This Volga level in particular kept us busy for several hours, and we didn't even manage to finish it. The main objective was to lower a bridge so that our train, the Aurora, could cross the river, but we ended up sidetracked for various story-related reasons, including recruiting useful new characters for the exodus across Russia and scavenging for resources in the hostile environment. Surely there's an iPad around here somewhere. Previous Metro games might have had limited weapon customization, but in Metro Exodus, it's so flexible, it's basically become weapon design now. Find a workbench and you can pull your trusty rifle apart and craft components for five different hardpoints. The stock, barrel, sight, magazine and a gadget attachment. New components will substantially change the handling and utility of the gun, and with a new open world adding more combat options, you'll want to think carefully about what you take into battle. New for Exodus, you also have a backpack, meaning you can quickly switch between attachments if you need to change to a more stealthy loadout, for example. Even if you've settled on your ideal selection of attachments for hot-swapping, you'll still need to visit a workbench from time to time. 
Ammo will need to be crafted and you'll have to clean your guns, otherwise they'll get all gross like an office keyboard and stop working. The best news though? Apparently you can attach multiple differently coloured laser pointers to your weapon. It doesn't really confer any benefit beyond the first one you add, but it makes your gun look like a Portsmouth nightclub in the early 1990s. And who doesn't want that? There's been all manner of weird and creepy creatures in previous Metro games, but never your standard zombie-style humanoid. <laughs> Metro Exodus introduces new enemies called Humanimals, who are basically just zombies with marginally better personal hygiene. Hey, I said marginally. At one point during the game, Artyom's wife Anna goes missing and it transpires she's fallen down a hole full of these humanimal jerks, resulting in a return to the classic claustrophobic Metro experience. Artyom. Whether that's a good thing or not depends on how scared of the dark you are. Unlike the dark ones from previous games who got cool telepathic powers in exchange for becoming a gross, hairless, featureless mutant, humanimals just appear to be mindless beasts. That doesn't make them much less scary when they jump you in the dark, though. Because of the day-night cycle, you're more likely to come across bandits on patrol during the day. At night, those guys hole up in their encampments, making it easier to sneak up on them in the dark. The only problem is, night is when the mutants come out. So, when you're planning to set out on a mission, you'll need to weigh up whether you prefer to face off against humans or mutants who want to take your face off. Humans! I want the humans! The great thing about being out in the open and away from the familiar metro-dwelling community is that you're free to encounter all the weird ways that people are scratching out an existence on the surface. One of the groups we met in this particular level was a bunch of technology-fearing cultists living in a church on the lake and led by a chap called Silantius. And the ground burned to ash! And the sea is boiled! He seems nice. Anyway, like every post-apocalyptic cult ever, these modern-day Luddites are rapidly revealed to be real jerks, blocking the bridge across the Volga and keeping a mother and child locked up in the church tower. Time to introduce them to your business associate, Mr. Shooty. It's best to try and clean out the building stealthily, sneaking across the various walkways, hiding in the shadows, and using either science weapons or takedowns. Usefully, the game has a light meter on your wrist, which shows when you're concealed in the darkness, which means even idiots like me can get a few stealth kills. You can also maximise your chances by blowing out the wall torches these guys use instead of light bulbs. In fact, these cultists are so against the electricity that even their head torches are a naked flame, which seems like a really good way to lose your eyebrows. Not that this guy's going to care in a moment. What is oh, and another thing, a bit weird, they also worship the Tsarfish, a giant mutated fish? Not sure what his opinion on technology is, or even if a fish can have opinions. And if you're wondering, yes, we met the Tsarfish, and no, he wasn't friendly. So, you know, look forward to that. Praise be to Tsarfish, the protector of the people. There you have it, five ways that Metro Exodus surprised us. This definitely seems more our sort of shooter than the previous Metro games, and we can't wait to explore the other open world levels. What do you think? Will this be competing for your cash come February 22nd, 2019? Let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for more on Metro Exodus from outside Xbox. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.